In this lesson, we're going to introduce a very important concept called vectorized computation. And we'll do so at the same time we introduce a very important Python library known as NumPy. Just as a reminder, the video that you're watching is part of a series known as CodeGraph. If you did not find this video through the lesson series, you can go to the homepage at vanderbilt.lt slash codegraph. And from there, you can find out more details about the series. Vectorized computation is a different approach to computing than what we've seen so far in these Python lessons. In the approach that we've taken so far, if we wanted to convert a list of prices from dollars to euros, we would do that by first creating a list. And then in this case, I've set up a variable to hold a conversion factor. That way it'll be easier for us to change that if we needed to in the future. Then the approach that we've seen before is to create an empty list and then do a for loop where we step through each of the items in the price list one at a time and then we take each of those prices and multiply it by the conversion factor we can then take the answer append it to the list and eventually after we've cycled all the way through the entire list um, we can print off the list of the converted prices so we can see how this works in an example here. So here is a price list I've created. <clears throat> if we run this cell, we can see there's the list and it is uh, of type list. So uh, if we wanna actually see what's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and indent this line here. And so what it's gonna do is print the uh, list as it gets built. So let's see what happens. So we can see here the first time it does the loop, it converts the first price, then and adds that to the list, then it converts the second price and adds that to a list, then it converts the third price and adds that to the list, and so on until it has stepped through all five of the um, items in our price list. And so in the end, we end up with this list right here. If I drop the indent back out again and run the script, we will just see the final answer. So this is like not a bad way to approach this problem, but it's also not the most efficient way to do it. 